Hello everybody. So it is already well into the second, almost finished the second week of October. Sorry, the moth flying around in here. I think I got it. And I had a birthday two weeks ago, tomorrow. Pretty significant birthday. And I cannot even believe this. Every time I sit there, I think, how did this happen? 49. My goodness, that is... Honestly, that, that's just an age to me. I, I'm just like, I, I can't get my head around it. <laughs> Especially when Red Fox and, um, oh, what's his name? The Archie Bunker actor, Carol O'Connor. They were both 48 when they, in the first seasons of the, the shows that they were known for. So, Sanford, Sanford Son and uh, all in the family, respectively. But, <laughs> so I'm now older than Archie Bunker. That is just... Uh. So, I have never been ashamed to steal from other YouTubers, particularly Criminali, because he has some pretty good, uh, pretty good ideas. And last year, he did a series called 50 Books to Read Before I'm 50. Now, 50 is way too ambitious for me, but I was thinking about that, and I was thinking about you know, reading books that I already own, which is another challenge that's going around right now, the read what you own challenge, which I failed absolutely miserably last time, but I'm never willing to give it another try, willing to give it another try. Or at least the uh, attempt. So I'm going to attempt 10 before I'm 50. And I kind of have a list picked out, but I'm not 100% sure what to you know, what's solidly going to go on the list. Now, if I make it past 10 and I read more, I'm, you know, it's just gravy from there. But I always tend to set my, my sights really low because I know I'm probably going to not do so well. So of the books that I would like to read before I'm 50, I do have a list and a lot of them are books that I already own probably started and stopped many times. So the first one is A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. Now, I've had the paperback for ever and ever. Uh, I don't know where it is right now, but it's somewhere on a shelf somewhere. And I always had a hard time getting into it because of the, it's called NASDAQ, the, uh, that slang that the teenagers use. But I got over that because I purchased the audiobook, which our friends at Chirp Audiobooks uh, had on sale for five bucks for a few months ago, and I had picked it up, and I decided this, that this now would be a good time to read it. And again, I'm not, I'm not affiliated with Chirp in any way. I'm not sponsored. I'm not monetized. I just really, really like them. Chirp is fantastic. If you like audiobooks, there's never a fee. Now, monthly fee like you have with Audible, and they have really good deals pretty much every week. Um, so, you know, wait, and something you like will probably go on sale. So a few weeks ago it was, uh, actually I've got The Road by Cormac McCarthy on audiobook. This one was, uh, that one was five bucks, this one was five bucks. That's five bucks American, which is like seven something Canadian. But it was a really good deal, so I grabbed it up and I... I listened to the audiobook just, you know, in the car while I was going on, on my drive to work or at home when I was relaxing, you know, before bed. And it, uh, it's famous enough, I'm sure, that you know the story, but I'll recap. Now, the book is read by an actor by the name of Tom Hollander, who is a British actor. And it looks like I, I had a look through his IMDb uh, page. Not a lot of things that I would have seen, but he was in Bird Box. It looks like he was in, um, and there was something else that stood out. I can't remember. But he's had a pretty long career in comedy, action, lots of voiceover work. So he's done a lot of things. And uh, what I liked about it, first of all, was that, I mean, the movie with Malcolm McDowell is just 
so incredibly iconic. I mean, he Malcolm McDowell just embodied that role. He was creepy. He was kind of charming in a slimy way. And, you know, I mean, Alex is just a horrible character. But Malcolm McDowell just took it with so much glee and so much style that it's a very entertaining watch, if not a very, not not somebody you would ever want to white, you know, invite home for dinner or you know take to meet your friends or anything. But so what I liked about the audiobook reading was that he wasn't just trying to do the Malcolm McDowell thing again. He he really did make an effort to bring his own kind of voice and expression uh, to the story and to kind of tell it in this way that you believe this guy is a sociopath. He doesn't have really strong feelings about anything. So he's kind of like, kind of goes along and along and then, you know, something happens, the violence or the, you know, the music that he likes that kind of makes him feel something. And then he just goes back to this steady uh, voice in the way that he delivers the NASDAQ uh, uh, I think that's that's how it's said Nasdaq that weird slang um is really it's nice it, it's it, he's got a really good voice for for the part so the story so it's a story about a guy named Alex and it's not really revealed he's a teenager but we don't find out until later that he's only 15 when all this stuff is going on and he's kind of the leader of his friends and he and his friends like to go and they go at this place called the Corova Milk Bar, which the milk is full of drugs that, you know, make them psychotic or something, psychopathic, I guess. And uh, they like to go out and they just commit violence. They beat people up and rape women or great women. And I mean, there's horrible, horrible people. And he is a complete unrepentant piece of shit. Like he is an awful character. Um, he's a creature of pure it. I mean, he, he likes the violence. He likes the drugs. He likes the old in out as he puts it. Um, and there's a really uncomfortable scene where he picks up two young girls at a record store. Now he, TV trope says that the girls are 10 years old, which I mean, is horrible. But the way that the way that it's expressed in the story, he says, "Oh, they're they're about ten, as in they seem really young." Like it, it's not expressly stated that they are ten years old. It's the way that he describes them. So I choose to believe that they're a little bit older than that. But but to Alex, he's trying to demean them. To make them seem like children. Because I just just think that's really horrible. <laughs> anyway. Um, which is not something that would even get published these days. I mean, this is another one of those books that really, really was... I mean, it was pretty shocking for its time. And I, I think it's another one that's kind of been banned in a lot of places. And has a cult following for that reason. Um... So he goes about his life and he's pretty happy, you know, as happy as a sociopath can be. And one day his uh, friends decide that, you know, he shouldn't be leader anymore. So he gets in a fight with all of them. He kind of wins and says, okay, you know what, you're going to do what I say. So they take him to this, uh, this place and they, um, they end up robbing and beating this old woman to death um and his friends abandon him and the authorities show up they arrest him so after a couple of years in jail when alex is having you know just as much fun in jail i guess as other places but he's really miserable this time because he doesn't have his music and he doesn't have his fun um he gets taken to I guess it's the magistrate or some council or something. And they decide, they, they tell him, you know, if you'll put up with this experiment, 
you can get out early. So, so it's, hell yes, of course, anything to get out early. So he, so they experiment with drugs and forcing him to watch violence until his, you know, until it makes him sick. And he has a horrifically visceral, nauseous reaction to any kind of, um, the things that used to make him happy, like violence and classical music and sex, are now, they, they just make him violently ill. So he's got no way to defend himself. And they turn him out into the world, <laughs> saying that he's cured. And the moral question that is interesting is that they've taken away his choice. And that in order to be a truly moral person, you have to choose not to do bad things. You don't just not do bad things because it will make you sick. You don't do bad things because you know the difference between right and wrong. And a moral person chooses the right path. And I mean, that sounds heavy handed the way that I describe it, but in the book, it's a question it's an interesting question that gets raised and and that's another um another thing that i really enjoyed about it is it's not it's not a book that's written just to you know have a good story and entertain you it really does ask a question that you know people have been grappling with for <laughs> thousands and thousands of years like there are people who say that religion is the only thing that stops us from you know robbing and beating and raping each other. But I don't think that's true. I think if there were no religion, we would still make that choice not to, you know, not to harm each other. And it, it sort of predates movies like The Purge, where they ask the question, you know, if there were no laws for one night, what would you get away with? But again, I think if it were a real, a real situation, the vast majority of people would choose not to bring harm to other people because most of us just don't want to do that. Right. So, um, and then as the story progresses, Alex has more and more trouble in this new life that he's created for himself. And then by the end of it, he is somehow cured of his cure. So the question is, can something like that even last longer than, you know, a few weeks or a month? And it's implied that he's happy, but he's gone back to his old ways. So um, the ending was a little bit, I mean, Alex is an unreliable, <laughs> he's like the king of unreliable narrators anyway, but he's uh it's a little bit hard to tell exactly kind of how the story ended. Like, is he cured? Is he going back to his old ways? What is he doing now? But, and by the time he gets out, his old friends are, um, or at least one of his old friends, no, two of his old friends are cops who are just doing the same thing, only they're doing it on the other side of the law, which makes, again, a statement about, uh, what we used to call um, oppressive state apparatuses, you know, the uh, the ones that would come down and try to try to force you to behave with violence, but they're just as bad as you know the people, the criminals creating all the problems, right? So it's a really interesting book, um, particularly the language, the slang, kind of once you get used to it. Uh, has a really nice rhythm and Alex is a, I mean, he's a horrible character, but he's a very compelling character and uh, it's definitely worth a read if you haven't. And I really, really liked the audiobook. I liked, uh, I liked just the sound of the actor and the way that he presented, you know, the way he spoke those weird, weird words, which apparently is a mix of 
British rhyming slang. Um, I think Russian, maybe a little bit of Latin, Croatian or something. I don't know. And it does get kind of easier. You get the rhythm of it as, as it goes. So great read. I'm going to give it, uh, yeah, that one's, I'm going to say that's pretty close to a five out of five. Um, no quibbles or complaints at all. It was, uh, that was a good one. So that's the first on my, my books I already own and 10 books that I would like to read before I turn 50, which will be next year. <laughs> I know I can't even think about it. And, uh, so next, so the next few weeks is, uh, following. Yay. Now, every year I do try to read some of the 100 books, uh, the 100 horror books. And I do have a couple that I still haven't, that I've picked up in years past, but never gotten around to reading. So I'm going to try to get to those this month. Uh, it'll probably be a little bit of a lighter, uh, reading month for me just because I'm, my job is kicking my ass. <laughs> I come home and I'm, I just, I just die. I'm so tired. So, uh, I, I, at the end of the day, I don't have a whole lot of energy. Um, but I will try to keep reading and making some videos for you and it is spooky season. So, you know, best time of year for us here at, uh, the horror channels and allegories, horror stories. So what would October be without at least a few horror stories? So that's it for me. If you get a chance to pick up the audiobook of A Clockwork Orange, I do highly recommend uh, giving it a listen. Hope you're reading lots of horror. Have a great day.